the Lancaster Central School District Board of Education meeting to order in the unlikely event of an emergency if we have to evacuate the room. Please note the locations of the exits. At this time, I ask you to silence your cell phones and rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please remain uh, standing for a moment of silent reflection. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tonight we remain standing for a moment of silent reflection for James Offhouse, a custodian from 1995 through 2013 who passed away on September 25th, 2019, and Eileen uh, Stelterman, a bus driver hired in 1999 who passed away on October 3rd, 2019. Thank you, everyone. So we're happy to be here at William Street School this evening. And as always, uh, we'll start with presentations 4.0. Uh, tonight, we'll start with 4.1, an audit presentation by uh, Carl Widmer, who is with Cheshire and Malecki, uh, speaking about our audit. Carl. better? No problem. I'll start over. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Carl Widmer. I'm a partner with Drescher and Malecki, and we serve as the external auditors for the district. And I'm here tonight to present on the results of the audit for the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2019. We've met previously with management and just earlier with the audit committee of the board and went over the audit in more detail. So tonight, We've provided a presentation here. Just to walk through, I think in past years, the board, um, you have turned around just to, to take a look and follow the presentation. This will just walk us through a summer of the audit and finish up with some highlights. Some Carl, excuse me, we'll, we'll take a seat in the front row or second row, okay. All right, so to get started, uh, first off, we'd like to explain why we're hired. We're hired by the district to provide an independent third-party opinion on the financial statements of the district. The financial records are maintained and prepared by management within the district throughout the year, and we're hired to come in, assess risk, perform a series of tests to gain assurance over the numbers that are included in those financial statements, and ultimately provide an opinion on whether we believe the financial statements of the district are fairly stated. Typically, each audit is summarized and concluded on with the products of our audit shown above. First off are the basic financial statements. This is the main product of our audit, which includes the information on the general fund, financial activity for the year, along with other funds of the district. And it also includes footnotes and also a section regarding the single audit, which is a special compliance audit on the district's federal awards. There's also a management letter that will include with any recommendations, auditor communications letter. This essentially reiterates the responsibilities of both parties being the district's management in financial record retention and then us as the auditors. Finally, there's an extra classroom activity report. This is a smaller cash basis financial statement that goes over the, the various clubs and activities throughout the district. So for tonight's presentation, we'll focus on the general fund. This, this is the lion's share of the financial activity within the district. And this slide presents a line graph of the revenue and expenditure activity for the past five years. If we focus in on the 2018-19 fiscal year, the year of this audit, you can see revenues, or your blue line, they've increased. 
those revenues are at just about $101 million, up $4.5 million from the prior year. Now that's primarily related to increases in state aid and basic formula, but also you saw some considerable increases in interest earnings as districts financial management utilized the cash on hand to earn some interest income on the, on the cash in the bank balance. On the expenditure side, that decreased a little over a million dollars from last year, as you see the red line declining from last year. Your normal operating expenditures experience normal increases throughout the year, scaled to reflect salary increases and step increases, health insurance. Where you saw savings this year in comparison to last year are the transfers to the capital projects fund. Fiscal year 18 had a little bit of reduced activity compared to the prior year. Whereas last year there was $8 million of transfers out, this year that number was only $2 million. To summarize, 2018-19 had revenues exceeding expenditures by $1.8 million, and as such, total fund balance increased by that amount. This slide presents the unassigned fund balance category at the district. Uh, this is the portion of general fund fund balance that is subject to compliance to real property tax law. Uh, essentially, it's called the 4% rule. And what it does is it compares this category of fund balance to the next year's budgeted spending. So the 2019-20 fiscal year budget includes $109.5 million of appropriations. This year, the unassigned fund balance of 4.3 million does not exceed the 4% and thus you're in compliance with real property tax law. Taking a look at total fund balance, you can see 1819 is at $38.3 million. That's showing that increase of $1.8 million from last year's $36.5 million. Now this increase in fund balance came at a particularly good time considering during 2017-18, the district used or fund balance went down just about four and a half million dollars. So to see an increase of 1.8 million dollars came at a good time. This graph breaks up the total fund balance into restricted and assigned portions, that's your red section, and then that unassigned portion that we spoke on last slide is in the blue at the bottom. The increases in reserves came to the bus purchases reserve and also the reserve for future capital projects. Um, both of these fund balances were, were dipped into or used during fiscal year 17-18. 2018-19 had operations which afforded the district the ability to replenish those reserves and get them back up to levels that they were in prior years. As far as observations go, one item that's a key communication to the board that you should know as a result of the audit, there are no reportable findings. Uh, there were no significant deficiencies or material weaknesses in internal control, um, and the district should be complemented on those internal controls. Also, I had mentioned there was a single audit, which is the compliance audit over the federal awards. Um, in particular, the special education program was tested this year based on a rotation of programs, and as a result of that audit, there are also no reportable findings, so a, a clean audit when it comes to those things. Overall, the district is in a stable financial position. Operations allowed for reserves to be replenished from the four and a half million dollars of spending in the last year. Um, that's indicative of uh, effective management and also controlled spending when it comes to the budget. We receive full cooperation from all the departments. Uh, we work with several of the, of the district's personnel throughout the course of the, the audit process and enjoy our time working for the district. At this time, I could take any questions from the board if you have any. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a good night. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Carl. Uh, for those of you that were listening closely, I, I hope you heard the words stable financial condition. 
Um, and we'll elaborate a little bit more upon the audit results and the observations of uh, Drescher and Malecki a little bit later. But right now, I'd like to move on to uh, a school board recognition presentation by Mrs. Bull and Mrs. Conti. Thank you. And we'd like to welcome all of our parents, grandparents, our teachers, our administrators, and our community. Tonight, it, it gives me great pleasure to honor you, our Board of Education members. You serve our community, you consult with us, you make decisions that serve our kids, your kids, our community. You should be in the news. You are our top, and again, we honor you. So tonight, it gives me great pleasure to showcase Lancaster's legendary news featuring our Board of Education. So if we could give our Board of Education members a round of applause before we begin, because I think they certainly deserve it. So without further ado, I know our students are ready to present. We welcome our legendary news. Did you just hear the great thing Mrs. Bull was saying about Lancaster Central School District? They must have support of board and education they really believe in us. Our district is doing some really great things as we promote excellence for all. I wonder what more they have for us to learn about a special edition of the legendary group. First up, we will hear from our K-3 buildings. Let's turn it over to the Black at William Street School. Sorry. 
I'm so sorry. I should have known. I can hear myself now. So we are focusing on growth mindset at Court Street and the power of yet that in our learning, we may not be able to do it now, but it is coming. And with perseverance and hard work, we'll get there. So this is Abigail, and she's going to tell us what she's good at and what she's still learning. Project Lead the Way Launch Program. 
This technology program offers students a taste in engineering in an age where curiosity is high. These hands-on opportunities provide the right blend of excitement and keep students engaged while working on a challenging curriculum. Join us in watching a quick video clip. Field house 
As athletes, we appreciate these new facilities and your support. So as we make our way back, uh, and we actually have Genevieve Fontana here this evening who will introduce our next presentation, uh, but Mr. Uh, Davenport and Mr. Tellerico had the opportunity to see a, uh, a wonderful presentation for the first time, and there's many of those to come in their years here on the board. And this is really what, about, uh, what board service is about. Uh, you know, I've often said if you're looking for inspiration, look to the young people uh, and their enthusiasm, their intelligence, their love for learning, uh, and they're really taking the bull by the horns and, and, and really capitalizing on all this district has to offer is really what makes board service very gratifying. And I know I speak for the rest of the Board of Education uh, when, they say, when I say we're happy and proud to be uh, a small part of this school district and to support the young ladies and gentlemen of our district um, that you see tonight. And those of you who are making your way out, thank you very much for presenting tonight. And uh, when you do a board presentation and you're brave enough to stand up here in front of everybody, I think your parents should definitely take you for ice cream on the way home. So I hope they heard that. So we'll turn it over to uh, Gen Genevieve Fontana and uh, Mrs. Mariani, and we're going to do our art uh, recognition ceremony right now. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. This is not on. This is on? You hear it? Boy, it sounds so light. Okay. Hi, I'm, I'm Mrs. Mariani. I'm the department chairperson for the art department K through 12. I've invited Genevieve here to talk briefly about what is going on this week at our new um, art gallery and music hall. Genevieve is an art student and a music student, so I'm very, very proud of her. I had her in class, and she has a little something to say. Hello, everyone. Um, I am a senior, and I am a member of the Visual and Performing Arts Academy. So we are extremely grateful for the new art gallery and music hall at Lancaster High School. These spaces are similar to facilities on college campuses and are perfect for student art shows and recital performances. As an Arts Academy student, I'm looking forward to celebrating student accomplishments in art and music in such a professional venue. Having the facilities on campus allows all high school students and faculty to be immersed in the arts. 
We invite you to attend our grand opening this Thursday night, October 10th, from 6 to 9, with performances beginning at 7. We are beginning with an alumni art show to celebrate the accomplishments of our former students. Hope you can join us. And I have a personal invitation for all of our board members. So thank you so much. Okay, a few years ago, maybe 10 now, uh, we started this um, program because we are so proud of our board. They are always there for us. Uh, without our board, I don't know where we'd be today. So um, graciously, about 10 years ago, they said, Nancy, we would love to have a K through 12 show that would be in our boardroom all year through. So there are 13 children here, each grade level, K through 12. And the work that you're going to see is the work that did last year. And my teachers through the program, K through 12, selected these students and, uh, from last year. So now they're one grade more. So when I ask a kindergartner come up, that kindergartner now is in first grade and so on and so forth. So um, our uh, president is going to um, pass out the artwork so that if the child is here, I would like that person to come up or a representative to come up. You're going to hold your artwork so everyone can see your wonderful artistic creative uh, work. And then I will recollect the work and I will take it before the end of the month. It will be up at the Central Avenue School boardroom with your name at the bottom and you may come uh, and uh, see the work. I think you have to call first but you may come and see the work up at the Central School. Thank you. Let's put this down. Our kindergartner is Eleanor Skoka. Skoka? Come on down, sweetheart. Congratulations, sweetie. And you can hold your work, too, and stand right there. Yeah, you look beautiful. And our first grader is Lily Schlitzer, Schlitzer S-C-H-N-I-T-Z-E-R. I'm not really good with the last names, just the first names. If she's here, come on down. sweetheart and this is for you too there you go thank you and grace hansberger she is second grade last year <laughs> you, stay right you can stand right next to her And our third grader is Evan Chow Chang. Evan, is he here tonight? Is Evan here? Okay. And we'll get that to them later. And um, our fourth grader is Carter Levette. Are they out of order? Oh, but they, how do they get out of order? I should have been out of order. Oh, Is that it? Okay. This one's here? This one here? Okay, sorry, they got out of order, sweetie. And this one is yours too, honey. You can show that to everyone? Yeah, maybe you can go down that way. Our fifth grader is Anya Dwyer. Is Anya here? OK. 
Okay. This one's not here. And our sixth grader is Lucas Shook. Lucas, is Lucas here tonight? Uh, they were in order. Because these, they should be one of these, because these are high school. This is eighth grade. That's eighth grade, and that's the rest is high school. So who recommends one of these? Because the teacher didn't have the name on the back. This one here. Okay. Thank you, sweetheart. Anything stand? Oh, this is his too, huh? And our seventh grader is Raven Meyer. And our eighth grader is Rachel Stabler. Stabler? Rachel, is Rachel in today? No? Not here? Okay. And um, our ninth grader is he Henry Plotch the third. He's one of my children now. I have Henry in class, and he's amazing. We love him. He's just so amazing. Here you go, Henry. And our 10th grader is Jaden Hafner. Is Jaden here? Okay, she couldn't make it, all right. Okay. And uh, our uh, 11th grader is Marissa Fal um, Falice. And she's in the back. I know she's here, Melissa Falice. And our 12th grader, who is now in college, so her mom is going to come up, is Carissa Godziak. And these are the extras, right? Mm -hmm. These are the extras. And for those of you who uh, might not remember, uh, Carissa is the creator of our Le uh, Legends mascot. Uh, she's now at the Pratt Institute in Brooklyn, studying art at one of the finest schools in the country. So thank you for mom coming and representing her this evening. Um, so let's have another big round of applause for our artists from the district. Where are the certificates for these? We have your certificate. certificates for these young people. Thank you very much, and this is definitely deserving of an ice cream visit, even for the older people, for uh, the older students. <laughs> so congratulations. Okay, 
uh, three very good presentations, examples of uh, the financial stability of the district and then all of the things and the reasons we are here uh, as school board members uh, to see the fine work of our uh, young ladies and gentlemen who attend all of our schools. So we'll move on to all the fun stuff in the evening for this evening. 5.0, correspondence. Do we have anyone from the board who has any correspondence they'd like to speak of? Okay, hearing none. Uh, we'll move on to 6.0, approval of minutes. Yeah, well, that's in the agenda. 6.1, could I have a motion to accept the regular session minutes from September 16th, 2019? Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. Do we have the audit? I can't the audit in here. Yeah, it's in here. Yeah. 7.0 items from staff organizations. Anyone from the Lancaster administ Administrative? Thank you for all the time for our students and for our staff and for our administrators. Yeah, congratulations on board appreciation and on behalf of Jacob Minor. Thank you very much. Anyone from the Lancaster Central Teachers Association? Hello, I'm uh, Johnny Burham, the new president of the Lancaster. Thank you. I'm the new president of the Lancaster Central Teachers Association. I, I do believe I know all of you in some capacity. I know Shannon, I, it's been a while since I ran into you shopping, but. Um, I just uh, wanted to introduce myself and uh, thank the board for um, your service. I think um, I, uh, above anybody else, may know a little bit about what it is to do this type of work, being on the town board for 10 years. Um, I think an appreciation, maybe Dr. Valley should take you guys out for ice cream after the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> also like to thank the kids and congratulate them on fine presentations. Uh, as well as the fine fiscal health of the district. So I, Jamie Phillips, I think you get a nice shout out for that as well. So you, if it wasn't for you saying no, we wouldn't be in the fiscal health that we are in. Um, I just wanted to say that I'm looking forward to working with the district in my new capacity. Um, I've been here 21 years teaching. I've been involved with the association in one form or another, and I just look forward to a continued relationship with the district. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Abraham. Okay, all right. Yeah, we'll do that right after uh, items from staff organizations. Uh, anyone from the Lancaster Association of Service Personnel? And anyone from the Lancaster Association of Substitute Teachers? Okay, before we move on to 8.0 board reports, um, we need to accept the audit uh, results from uh, Drescher and Merlecki. So could I have a motion to accept uh, the results of their audit? So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? Mr. Sage? All right, uh, the audit committee did meet uh, uh, at six o'clock today, uh, at which time the external uh, audit report for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2019 was presented by Carl Widmer of Drescher and Merlecki. Uh, the uh, committee is uh, uh, recommending that uh, we, the full board approve. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So moved. Uh, I just had one additional thing, thing to say about the audit. Uh, I mentioned uh, financial stability of the district. Uh, you know, financial news is uh, oftentimes does not make news unless it's negative. Uh, unless there's a huge spike in uh, taxes coming or uh, a misappropriation of funds or some funds are missing or there's questions or we missed state aid deadlines, something to that effect. Um, you'll notice that um, with respect to Carl, the presentation tonight was very dry and very boring. And you saw the two lines, the blue and the red, and they'll sort of meet in the middle. That means expenditures and revenues are, are very close together, which is what uh, school districts look for. Uh, we're one of the most frugal districts in Western New York, uh, and we continue to do so because of the expertise of uh, Jamie Phillips uh, and Dr. Valley and his administrative staff. So uh, we'd like to recognize yet again their expertise uh, in those matters, uh, and we have such trust in them as a board because they always come through uh, with financial stability for this district. So hats off to them and thank you to them uh, once again. 
uh, 8.0 board reports. Anyone from the board have anything they'd like to share? I just, um, some news from the Erie County Association of School Boards. There is uh, an opportunity for some training on November 16th. It's advocacy training. Um, different ways to advocate and to speak with our local elected officials, if anybody's interested. It's from uh, 8.30 in the morning till noon at Erie Lombosi. Thank you, Mrs. Cohen. Anyone else from the board have anything they'd like to add? Okay, we'll move on to 9.0, Superintendent's Administrative Report, Dr. Valley. A couple of things. Um, I just wanted to take a minute to uh, highlight some of the great things that are happening around the school district. Um, there was a harvest at Como Park, and uh, Farmer Marcinelli, otherwise known as Molly Marcinelli, the school principal, visited Como Park um, Elementary last week. Uh, with the help of some other farmers, AKA teachers and cafeteria staff and parents and volunteers, uh, they harvested crops from the Como Park Garden and served them to students in various forms for their sampling. Uh, the students were served raw radishes and cucumbers and tomatoes and broccoli. Uh, they had roasted potatoes and uh, bread with chives. The students were asked and challenged to try something that they would not eat on a regular basis. And as Farmer Marcinelli always says, the food and the day was nutritious and delicious. Um, at this point, we have completed all the open houses uh, at the K through 12 uh, schools. Um, I'd like to thank all the teachers and administrators and staff for accommodating our parent clients uh, in learning how we serve their children. Uh, much was presented, for example, volunteer opportunities and how to get involved, holiday uh, party sign-ups, parent-teacher conference sign-ups, classroom rules and expectations, curriculum discussions, upcoming uh, field trip opportunities, notes to the parents, notes from the parents, PTO information, and on and on and on. Um, a little out of the ordinary this year as part of uh, Court Street Elementary's open house, the PTO incorporated a walkathon, which has organized the Court Street PTO to uh, raise funds. In this way, parents had the time to interact with their teachers and students had the opportunity to enjoy nice weather, get some exercise and enjoy a magic show. Uh, seemed like a, the students really enjoyed that night and especially the magic show. Thanks to all for uh, their effort in putting these things together and these opportunities for our children and our parents of our community. And finally, our uh, high school orchestra had the pleasure of rehearsing and performing with Jordan Borden, excuse me, Jonathan Borden, uh, who's a double bassist. I don't know what that means exactly, but I'm not a music guy, so double bassist. Anyway, Jordan's fantastic. He's with the Buffalo Philharmonic Orchestra. In fact, he won his first audition with the BPO at the ripe old age of 20. Uh, he has a wealth of accomplishments and experiences and is now performing uh, with, and I'm proud to say, the best music program in New York State. Um, and uh, he can add that to his accomplishments um, as one of the, his accomplishments. Uh, thank you very much. Have a great night. Thank you, Dr. Valley. 10.0 is old business. Anyone have any old business they'd like to discuss? 11.0 is new business. 11.1, .1, personnel items. 11.1.1, could I have a motion to accept the personnel changes with the addendum that each of the board members was provided? So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 11.1.2, uh, could I have a motion to accept a uh, tenure recommendation? Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. But that tenure recommendation will be approved this evening and then we'll recognize that, uh, that teacher at a future meeting. 11.1.3, could I have a motion to revise the appointment dates of uh, an acting assistant principal? Uh, that's due to the early return from maternity leave of Stephanie Latke and both uh, son and mother are doing very well. We're happy to report. Could I have a motion to accept those dates? Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 11.2, education items. 11.2.1, .1, could I have a motion to accept the Committee on Special Education's report? So Second. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.0, business and financial items. 12.1, could I have a motion to accept the financial items? So moved. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.2 through 12.5 are policy adoptions, 7511, immunization of students, 
5681 school safety plans, 5620 fixed asset inventories, accounting and tracking, 5662 meal charging and prohibition against meal shaming. Uh, could I have a motion to accept each of those policies? So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? So moved. 12.6 is the first policy reading of 7221, participation in graduation ceremonies and activities. 12.7 is first policy reading of 7320, alcohol, tobacco, drugs, and other substances for students. 12.8 uh, is first policy reading of 7580, safe public school choice. And first policy reading 12.9 is uh, uh, 6150, alcohol, tobacco, drugs, and other students for staff. Those are for information only and will be voted on at a future meeting. 12.10, uh, could I have a motion to accept the 2019-20 Board of Education goals? Second. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So moved. Those Board of Education goals are on the district's website if you care to uh, per, uh, review them. 12.11 uh, uh, is a tax tertiary for 6635 Transit Road, LLC. Could I have a motion to accept that settlement? Second. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.12 is tax tertiary with ecology and environment. Could I have a motion to accept that? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.13, could I have a motion to accept the tax tertiary for Freehoffer's Bakery? So moved. So Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.14, could I have a motion to accept the construction change orders? So moved. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? So moved. 12.15 is a contract with Erie One BOCES. Uh, they rent rooms from us in some of our schools. Uh, could we have a motion to accept that rental agreement? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.16 is amended contract with Sound Transformations Music Therapy. Could I have a motion to accept that contract? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Those opposed? So moved. 12.17 uh, is a contract with Buffalo Construction Corporation. Could I have a motion to accept the contract? So moved. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.18, could I have a motion to accept the surplus equipment report? So moved. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 12.19, uh, could I have a motion to accept the extracurricular clubs report? So moved. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? So moved. 12.20 is a proposal with CME Associates. Uh, associates. Could I have a motion to accept the proposal? So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? So moved. 13.0 is our public hearing. Uh, we have no speakers signed up for this evening. Uh, next. Could I have a motion to go into executive session to discuss matters leading to the removal of a particular person? So moved. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, we'll, uh, we'll be going into executive session. This effectively ends the public portion of our meeting. Our next meeting will be November 4th, uh, 2019 at Como Park Elementary School at 7 p.m. Thank you very much for coming, everyone.